All right. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. There's a little bit of a maze to walk through to come here. Oh, hi, everybody. How are you? Wow. Jewel tones. Through. Thank you. Wow. That was amazing. That was really wonderful. And thank you, Diane. And if you want more of that, you should come on June 4th where we're really going to be celebrating the legacy of our choir. It'll be a wonderful morning full of choir music. And I've been hearing some of the rehearsals. It's pretty amazing. So I hope you'll join us on that day. Wow, it feels like uh, two weeks since I've been here with you. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, Dallas, it has. <laughs> we are... Um, we're doing the live in the out, out loud theme, and we're, boy, I don't know about you, but the choir's certainly living out loud. They're really giving us all their heart and soul through their music. We've been talking about all these great topics like curiosity and authenticity and vulnerability, and it feels to me like we've been sort of creeping out onto the skinny branches of this philosophy and looking at some of the ideas that sit on the outside, so to speak, that bring us into that place in our center where, where we're grounded in spirit. And this month, we're looking at the light in the shadows. And so I want to um, share one of my very favorite quotes out of the Gospel of Thomas. And when I heard it, it made quite an impression on me, and I'm wondering if you might have the same experience. He writes, if you bring forth what is within you, what you bring forth will save you. If you do not bring forth what is within you, what you do not bring forth will destroy you. Let me read that again. If you bring forth what is within you, what you bring forth will save you. And if you do not bring forth what is within you, what you do not bring forth will destroy you. Phew, heavy, deep, makes you think about what, you know, what's that mean? Well, obviously, we are a philosophy that draws from the inner wisdom, that draws from the life that lives within us. And then we express that as we move through life. And in this particular teaching, we spend a lot of time cultivating that inner life, that wisdom that is everywhere present. There's, there's this idea that God is everywhere, that the, it isn't located in one spot, in one religion, like we demonstrate in our flames of faith. We talk about all the beautiful uh, pieces of wisdom and truth that each one of those religions bring forth. All of that is everywhere present. I think it was, no, I know it was Emerson who said that the, the God's center was nowhere and circumference was everywhere. And so as we look at this idea of the light and the shadows, two weeks ago I began to talk about shadow work. And a couple of you came up to me afterwards and said, what you talking about, Reverend Ellis? What is this shadow work you're, to, you're referencing? And, and what, I, what I'll say to that is the thing about shadow work, and, the, and it's really the work of looking at the stuff in our subconscious that we're unaware of, the, the problem is, like, you don't know what you don't know until you know it, <laughs> right? And so shadow work usually shows up kind of left-handed, forgive me, left-handed, people in the room. <laughs> I'm not denigrating you at all, but what I, what I find with the work uh, that we call shadow work, when, it, when we begin to do that work, often there's something that that's, we're unaware of. It's below the surface, and it, it sort of pokes its head up in awkward and uncomfortable ways. Ever over-respond? Maybe you, uh, some little mishap and you reacted like it was a 
the end of the world. Yeah, yeah, that's usually an indicator that there's something under the surface that wants to be brought forward. I first became acquainted with shadow work through this um, amazing book by Debbie Ford and um, called The uh, Dark, hmm, I know that, I knew the title, I know it very well, but it's not, here it is. It's, um, no, wow, there it is, The Dark Side of the Light Chasers. I wanted to get it right, The Dark Side of the Light Chasers, and it's an old book, it's been around for a long time. As a matter of fact, it was on BookBub for $1.99, it's that old. Um, and that book really began to explore at a, at a pretty public level for the first time in, the, I guess it was in the mid 2000s, 2005 around there. Um, it became pretty popular in my circles and it began to ex, um, explore this idea of looking at what's in our subconscious and bringing it forward so it could be released. What a concept. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's perfectly modeled in the natural world. When you look at how things happen in plant lives, we have this, I love the seed metaphor for uh, the darkness. When we're working in the garden and we're working with seeds, they need darkness to germinate. And then when they germinate, they come to life, but the very word germinate means to come into existence or expression. And so we need the shadow and the, the dark places so that we can begin to experience the light. And what I know about the, those dark places within us and that shadow work is there's light all around us. As we lean into the repressed emotions and feelings and experiences we might have had, It feels safe to leave those alone <laughs> over there somewhere, that broken heart or that sudden lost job or the loss of a loved one. It feels safe to go keep ourselves busy and do other things. But what I know is that as an expression of God, as an individual who's walking out the light of being the authentic authentic expression of God as Alice and as the authentic expression of God as each one of you, when we hold back and withdraw or, or put to the side and don't, don't deal with or don't allow something to complete itself, it can sometimes stand in the way of our light. It can block us from full expression. And so the idea of shadow work is to find those safe places so that we can, like the sea, germinate and fully express ourselves. Now, I'd like to tell you, it's a one-off, but it's not. <laughs> and back to that, that um, model that the natural world gives us when we put a seed into the ground, it's in a hard shell, and it needs the darkness to germinate and open up and bring life forth. Now, most plants that I'm aware of create some kind of seed out of the center of themselves, and those seeds drop into the earth somehow, whether they fall out of the plant or they come from within the plant, and back into the earth so that when that blossom is complete, it withers, it dies away, and the cycle begins again. My experience is that I have lived so many lives. <laughs> I have had so many experiences. There are things that happen over and over again. They, they, it's never the same. When I'm working with a principled way of life, like this philosophy, I have these great tools so that I can learn the lessons so that I can grow and blossom in a different way. And shadow work has given me a great deal of context and clarity. For me, practicing the principles of this philosophy, the end game is clarity and transparency. The clearer I am, the more transparent I am, 
the more authentic I am as an individuated expression of God. And so when I do my shadow work, when I find those safe places to do it, I'm not talking about drowning in our tears, but to finding a place to to process, to see what it is that was hidden in the subjective and wanted subjective and wanted it to be released. When I find those places, there's so much freedom on the release when I can let go, when I can allow the clarity to come forward. I was um, looking at different material for this week's talk, and, and, and everything was around the seed, so the, the music has been perfect for that. Thank you. Um, and there's a line from a Ricky Byers song called It All Fades Into God. And the whole song is like perfect. And if the choir hadn't had perfect music for today, I would have requested this song. But I want to share one line of it with you that, that has, it's been one of those lines that I re- try to remember when I'm struggling or with, I'm in one of those challenging places where I'm getting ready to blossom again. The, um, the line goes, inside of my pain is the seed of my strength. Now, I don't know about you, but when my heart is broken, I don't really think about looking inside my pain <laughs> for what's going to lead me to back to my joy. But a lot of times, what I find is it's the stillness, it's being with what is, it's what the the Zen and the Buddhists talk about that now moment being totally present that gives us the ability to find what it is that is growing out of that experience and wanting to express itself by means of us. And so that quote from the Gospel of Thomas about if you bring forth what is within you, what you bring forth will save you. I see that as the the seed that wants to replenish itself in my life and continue to circulate as I'm moving through experiences and relationships and life. And when I withhold, it's not a bad thing necessarily, but I have to understand that if I don't bring that forth, it will destroy me. And I want to suggest that when I say that it will destroy you, it's kind of like the Sufis and the mystics who talk about annihilation with bliss. There's an opportunity for us to allow whatever has been holding us tight in the bud to be released, to allow it to be destroyed so that we can be in our truth, the next version of it. I see shadow work as an advanced form of spiritual practice. And it requires us to be grounded in this philosophy and in a spiritual, um, doesn't have to be this philosophy. You can be grounded in any spiritual philosophy that reminds you all the time that God is everywhere. And when you are fortified by that truth, you can do the work of embracing the dark, embracing the shadow, seeing what it is giving you, seeing what it is that is there to be used as fertilizer for the soil you find yourself in. I um, was thinking about a story. Now, I've, I've shared many times how I had a wonderful experience, almost miraculous, of moving from being an accountant into my second career as a full-time minister. And I've shared all the, the highlights with you. But I don't think I shared the in-between space that I experienced. Uh, when I was um, almost ready to leave accounting and go move into full-time ministry, I was doing, like, part-time accounting, um, full-time accounting and part-time ministry, and I had a business, 
and I, and I was getting ready to sell my business, but it turned out it wasn't time, and so I needed to shore up the business, and then I started to get a little comfortable. I had a, an accounting manager, and she was, everything was like clockwork, and it was working really great. Yeah, I still had, I had set this intention that I wanted to be a full-time minister, <laughs> and that I, yet I was comfortable in my business. Oh, let's see, and then uh, my marriage of 31 years blew up, <laughs> and then my accounting manager got a much better offer than what I could match and left my, my tax business. And come to think of them, both my ex-husband and my accounting manager got a better offer. So <laughs> But it was hell in the hallways, as they say. <laughs> as I was moving through that, I had to roll right into tax season. I hired somebody. It wasn't a good hire. And you know, as I said earlier, you don't know what you don't know. And this gal didn't know what she didn't know. So I was arguing with her all the time about the position she was taking and, and the, the things she thought she knew. Whew. I, it was, it was, it was, I would say, probably the worst tax season I ever had. And then I sold my business. It happened, like, within months after that. And, and what I, and if looking back at that, it was exactly the fertile ground that I needed to fully let go and to step into ministry full time. It was the, it was almost like a launching pad. It's sort of like, I didn't look back, let me tell you. I was like, I'm out of here. Um, yeah, and, and that's how uh, embracing the darkness, the shadow, it can work for us. It can, it can begin to accumulate energy. If you think about that, accumulating energy within us so that we can really move to the next phase of our lives. There's lots of experiences that life has to offer us that are not pleasant. They may not be the things that you choose to move through, but like that beautiful song that Ricky Byers sings in It All Fades Into God, there are no mistakes. There are no mistakes in God. And everything fades into God when I am grounded in truth. And so what I offer you as we continue to, pardon the bad pun, dive into the shadow work here this month and look at this, is that it's not bad. We judge it as so. But it's really an opportunity to have some kind of a chrysalis experience so that we can let go of those things that we no longer need so that we can truly stand in the light of our truth. Yeah. Yeah. It's powerful stuff. I'll leave you with a couple of lines from, um, from that song. She writes... In my pain there, inside my weakness, is the seed of something greater in me. And the shame of not choosing higher, of all the disappointing moments, they all fade in to God. Thank you very much. Hmm. So let's pray. For what I know is that there is a place of oneness where I don't know separation, where I only know unity. And so I invite all of us to go within, to the place within ourselves where we have never been harmed, where we have never been hurt. And as we take a deep breath, Breathing in the power of that truth. I know for each one that whatever life serves up, whatever ideas come forward for us, whatever experiences, whatever situations we 
find ourselves in. It is another opportunity to know our wholeness, to know God, and to be reborn yet again like the phoenix out of the ashes for all form is temporary all form is transient and the only true permanence is love the love of the creator for its creation that is forever moving through it as me, as you, and as everybody we encounter. There's absolutely no exceptions to this. And so know with me now that we see the light within the shadows, that we know that even in the darkest of times, there is light too and that we are carried forth by principle, by truth, by love, and that we are always safe in the arms of love. So as we move through this month, this week, looking at the shadow, let us also bring the light with us and let us walk confidently in the direction of our dreams, knowing that everything we need is always within us. What a beautiful idea to know and carry. So I simply release this, release this into the law, release this back to love. And in this moment, we simply release this and surrender ourselves saying together, and so it is.